Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Sopna. Yeah, sorry, I'm late for uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so quickly, last class we have been talking about constructor. We have seen the use of constructor and we have seen what is the definition of the constructor and what are the properties. And we have seen with the example how to use the constructor and uh, what is the skeleton structure of the constructor and what is the access modifier, how to define it. And when it is called, we have seen with the examples. Constructors are three types, default constructor, non-parameterized constructor, parameterized constructor. Default constructor is where it does not have a parameters. Non-parameterized constructor is nothing but also it does not have a parameter. So basically these both are same. When it comes to parameterized constructor, method, the constructor method will have the parameter defined inside that. And when this constructor get executed, this is get executed whenever the object or class is created, during that time it gets executed and this will be executed only one time. So that's what we have seen. And also we have seen a couple of uh, interview questions. What are the interview questions can come up with the constructor, wrapper and static, all of those we have seen. Today, uh, we will be learning new topic called extension controller. Today, the new topic is extension controller. Whoever is taking the notes, put a heading of extension controller. Now, the point is, where did you hear the extension controller? If you have attended my previous classes, I might have mentioned extension classes. Extension. Yes. So when I was discussing the controller, when I was discussing the controller, there are three types of the controllers are there. It's difficult to go back. So there are three types of controller that I have mentioned. Okay, what are the three types of controller? One is standard controller. And second one is custom controller. And the third one is extension. Third one is extension controller. There are three types of controllers. So whenever you are using a standard controller in the Visual Force page, you cannot use the custom controller. And whenever you use the custom controller, you cannot use the standard controller. Right? Either you have to go with the standard controller or you have to go with the custom controller. This is what we have seen in the last class, last class in a sense, few classes back, some couple of classes back, we have seen the, along with the standard controller, you cannot use the custom controller. Both will not be exist in the single page. Standard and custom controller cannot be exist in si single page. So how to handle this situation? How to handle this situation? This situation can be handled with the new concept called extension controller. The extension controller can coexist with the standard controller. So whenever you want to use a standard controller and along with that, you want to go ahead and you want to use the, some custom logic. In such cases, we have to go with the extension controller. Now, interview question can come up. What is the extension controller? What is the extension controller? Extension controllers are extension controllers are an Apex class containing constructor to extend standard controller. To extend standard controller. That's what we have discussed in the same simple format. So whenever we wanted to use the
सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट सपना बट देर इज लॉर्ड ऑफ नॉइज सम गाइज आर ऑल आर ऑन नॉट म्यूट कैन यू गाइस प्लीज गो ऑन म्यूट ओके फाइन सो व्हाट इज अ एक्सटेंशन कंट्रोलर एक्सटेंशन कंट्रोलर्स आर एन एपेक्स क्लास containing the constructor the extension controller is nothing but apex class which containing the constructor to extend the standard controller functionality what is that means so let's assume that i have a visual force page here this is the visual force page this is the visual force page and here is the salesforce database here is the salesforce database salesforce database right so here we have a salesforce database and this is the visual force page standard controller is nothing but i'm directly calling the i'm directly calling the salesforce database in the visual force page directly calling the data from the database from the database so from the database if i wanted to call directly to the visual force page then we use the standard controller standard controller standard controller is which for example i can call directly the account contact or any object data could be a custom object any object data any object data i can directly call using the standard controller right whereas custom controller custom controller is nothing but i have a apex class this is the apex class so what is happening i am my visual force page is connected to the apex class and this is going to get the data from salesforce database so apex class is going to get the database it is going to get the database and apex class is going to pass the information to visual force page so this is called as a custom controller now as per the salesforce standard as per the salesforce standard we cannot use the standard controller custom controller together i cannot use it in case if i have to use the custom controller along with the standard controller along with the standard controller if i have to call then i have to use the then i have to use the extension, extension. controller yes i have to use the extension controller so what is the difference between the custom controller and extension controller okay i understand you are only changing the keyword called custom controller here in the visual force page and you are saying that extension controller instead of custom controller instead of custom controller in the visual force pages you are simply saying the extension controller but ultimately you are calling the same class ultimately you are calling the same class so how it is going to be different so why salesforce says that standard controller custom controller cannot be used together what is the difference the difference is custom controller is a normal any generic class that means any generic class is nothing but this is 
implemented without without constructor this is implemented without constructor generic class is implemented with con without constructor extension controller if you are using a extension keyword here and if you are using the extension controller that class class has to be implemented with constructor so that just a second so that the standard and extension can combine together that, that means along with the standard controller i can use the extension controller right i can use the extension controller if i am using the standard controller in the visual force page along with that i can use the extension controller together so that it will be uh, i can use the data from salesforce as well as i can use the data from apex class also let's say that i have a business requirement let's say that i have a business requirement the business requirement is the business requirement is for example in the visual force page is divided into the two sections visual force page is divided into the two sections and first section is i'm directly getting it from the standard controller let's say that account name account name phone number fax and the industry and the industry right these details i'm directly getting it from the standard controller let's assume that here also i have a one button which is a save button this is a save button okay and at the bottom i have a something logic which i need to implement in the extension controller assume that enter enter first number sorry sapna i think your uh, your screen got stuck Uh, Still, we are seeing a paint page only. You are not able to see the paint page. Let me stop and share it again. Now, are you able to see? Yes. Okay. We can see. We can see, sir. Okay. Yeah, fine. Let me check your internet. um so the second section is enter the first number enter the second number and the third one enter third number and here we have a result this is completely the custom so the result is out of 3 i wanted to show the highest number i wanted to show the highest number or smallest number whatever it might be so this entirely a custom logic and assume that i have another button here calculate let's say that this is a calculate this is a calculate so what is the first section first section is i am pulling it directly from the database salesforce database using the standard controller and in the second section i have a something custom logic which i need to implement using the apex class this cannot be done in the standard controller so let's do this business requirement let's see how it is going to be let's say that let me open developer console so let's create a new visual force page 
बीएफ अंडरस्कोर ट्वेंटी थ्री जीरो सिक्स ट्वेंटी थ्री जीरो सिक्स ट्वेंटी थ्री जीरो सिक्स एंड लेट से दैट वी आर यूजिंग द एक्सटेंशन कंट्रोलर राइट वी आर डूइंग इट फॉर द एक्सटेंशन कंट्रोलर let's say that ext controller and this is example 1 okay so if you have attended my previous classes you might be aware how to write the visual force pages right now we are expecting the input so it has to be The entire structure has to be inside the apex form. Apex form, and inside this apex form, apex colon page block. and then apex colon page block section and inside this let's put a title title equal to account Title equal to account, and what are we expecting in the visual force page? The first section has to be pulling the account details, right? This is the input field. So in that case, apex colon input field. Let's add all the input fields first. How many we need it? Let's add it for the five fields. Let's assume that let's take only five input fields. Okay. Inside this input field. what are the data that we wanted to pull it from the standard controller if i wanted to display the value use the value keyword value equal to let's assume that this is the account dot name first field is account dot name and second input field value equal to by this exclamation exclamation is basically it is binding your visual force page to the salesforce data or it is binding your visual force the variable what are the api name or variable which you are giving it is going to bind with your apex classes or salesforce data which are you are doing it right next field which we are going to take it as name phone and then fax industry Value equal to curly braces exclamation account dot fax and here value equal to curly braces exclamation account dot industry okay perfect now all the input fields are there what is the error here. Now there is no error. It's fine. Okay. Now input fields are done. After the input field, save button, right? In order to put the save button in the Apex class, we have to use the Apex colon command button. Command button. And the value equal to what is the button name? We are going to put it. Let's say that standard save button. standard save action 
we are going to use the standard save button this is by default salesforce is giving it on behind this method i'm not doing anything behind this method i'll not be doing anything this is a salesforce has provided the save which is a standard save button now this is completed now let me close this section and let me open another section let's say that perfect this is the first one is account details in the second one custom this is how we comment out in the uh, in the visual force page in the visual force page in order to comment it you have to use <coughs> less than exclamation dash dash and you have to end with dash dash greater than okay now in the second section what what do we need we need to calculate the numbers right so let's go ahead and add the apex colon page block section item perfect now this is let's put the title so that we will understand here title is let's put calculation okay now we came inside this inside the public inside this let's put all the output fields first i have to display the text apex colon output instead of text let's take the label what i'm doing right now i'm doing this part enter the first number this is a label right enter the first number so let's say that here value equal to enter number okay now we have this label now here i have to create a box here i have to create a box to enter to user to enter the information okay so for that i will take the apex colon input text okay you might ask me here like in the first session you have not taken the output label in first session also you have the account name right this is a label uh, but i have not taken the apex output label here why because i am directly referring the standard object here standard object as soon as i take the api field name what it does it takes the field name as well as the value i'll i'll show you that okay now let's copy this and let's use the another two this is a num2 and this is num3 okay now at the end let's use the apex colon command button we need a button to calculate now once i click on this i wanted to print the details it has to be the result is right that's it now what is there unknown property account because we have not used the standard controller i have to use the standard controller account
let's save this okay it says perfectly fine now what i have done i have not done much here anything the first thing i have used a standard controller i have implemented the first section and i have implemented the second session okay this part is not yet done we just implemented the ui now let me show you the preview okay these all coming in the two columns so what we will do is column equal to 1 and let's say here also column equal to 1 let's save it uh, refresh okay this is perfectly fine right this is what we have discussed account details calculation details account details calculation details save and calculate right that's what we have done here now as i am using the standard controller <coughs> Let's take the Bollywood <coughs> industry record. So I'm copying one of the account ID, and what I'm doing ID equal to I'm entering that 18 digit ID. So what will happen? It is automatically going to pull the information. This does not have the facts. Let's put the facts details. Okay. Right. Let me refresh. Yeah. Okay. One two three. One two three. Banking. Fine. Perfect. It is displaying the details. Now, if I try to do this, twenty three, twenty four, something. If I click on calculate, what will happen? It doesn't display anything because there is nothing. I have not written any logic here. this week this works perfectly fine now if i try to update industry from banking to education click on the standard save button it will redirect it to the account because that is the standard sales force because that is the standard sales force functionality automatically it will take you and industry got updated to education right no standard controller is working perfectly fine no on top of the standard controller if i have to have a some business logic here to display the highest number now let's go ahead and implement the apex class file new apex class cl_2306_ extension controller 1 now here what are the details that i need in the class i need to capture the number 1 number 2 number 3 and then i wanted to display the result so basically i have four input fields that i need to capture right 1 2 3 4 i need to capture the four input input fields what i'll do simply i'll declare here public integer num1 and what i'll do set and get set get okay. we have discussed this concept already so i'm going for the right public integer num2 and i need set get okay. and how many i need it number 3 i need it and another one result i need to store okay so perfect i have these three fields which are going to capture it from here how I, how it is going to capture this information how I, it is going to capture because in the input text i have to mention in input text i have to mention the value but it will not accept because let's complete this visual post page will not accept that now these variables assume that i am storing the number 1 number 2 number 3 result uh, data in the here but as soon as i click on the calculate button as soon as i click on calculate button 
it has to call a method so i need to implement a method public void let's say calculate and what are we trying to do here identifying the highest number if num1 greater than num2 and num1 greater than num3 so what we have to do we have to store the value into the result which value we have to store we have to store the num1 if this does not qualify then else if no which one we have to check num2 we have to check num2 highest or not compared to num1 and num2 compared to num3 let's store the num2 in the result if this is also not qualified then finally we'll have the else condition this is which concept this is the loop concept we have discussed one of the loop concept right so result by default let's store it into the num3 let's store the num3 that's it my logic is done okay there is no error perfectly fine now let's go ahead and use this in the visual course page let's say extensions extensions equal to control now immediately it is going to throw me an error what it is saying it is saying that you do not have the constructor what is the constructor it is expecting cl underscore 2306 extension controller one and with the parameter so it is saying that parameterized constructor is missing parameterized constructor is missing now let's go ahead class how to declare the uh, constructor which is the same as the class name public and the class name with the parameterized what is the parameterized it is saying apex pages dot standard controller apex pages dot standard controller from the visual course page if you are calling a constructor what constructor is playing a role whenever the visual course page is executed constructor always has to define with the apex pages dot standard controller it has to always define the parameterized apex pages dot standard controller what is this parameter is to be apex pages whatever happens in the page whatever happens in the page whatever the data is there in the page everything sits into this standard controller apex pages that means c c contains everything that is happening in the visual course page so that's the reason this is by default salesforce has given this whenever we are using the constructor for the visual course pages then we have to use the apex pages dot salesforce standard controller and give the naming as c you can give anything that should be fine now let's go ahead and save this i'm not doing anything here i just created the skeletal structure of the constructor okay it's saved perfectly fine now there is no error now what i can do i can refer the variables that i have declared in the class i can use it here so whenever the user is entering the values i can store it in num1 and here value i can store it in num2 here the value i can store it in num3 perfect this is fine now next one what i have i have a result the result where i need to store here the value equal to exclamation result no this is fine till this point is fine now when i click on a calculate button 
as soon as i click on a calculate button i wanted to do some business logic i wanted to execute where is the business logic here business logic is in the clc what i can do we have a keyword called action here that means on click of a calculate button i wanted to execute this action perfect so let me execute it okay so let's take the id to pre populate the values from salesforce on the first section account name phone number fax industry is auto populated now i have a second section which is doing the highest number column calculation now which one is the highest here calculate Two thirty-two is the highest. If I say this is the highest, like another one, calculate. It is taking some time. Seems like okay. There is also there is a problem here. Whenever I click on calculate, it is what is happening. It is completely going out. Right? The screen is blank here. That is a performance issue because there are a couple of things will come here in the performance issue. Could be a network issue. Could be a my network is having the problem or what we have to do in the Visual Force page in order to reduce the performance. We will see that later. But right now, focus on this extension controller. We can call the extension controller along with the standard controller, and these both are working fine. Now let's say that there is a another requirement. There is a another requirement which says that there is a another requirement which says that okay, get me all the details. Get me all the details here through the standard controller. Okay, get me all the details here through the standard controller. But I need to have a my own button here. My own button, let's say that it is a custom save. I do not want to use the sales for save option. This is a custom. Custom save option. What is happening? Get me all the details from Salesforce database directly using the standard controller and pass this information to the Apex class. Pass this information to the Apex class. Let Apex class does the insert. Right now, what is happening? Right now, we are directly calling here the standard controller. And what are the data that is updated using the standard Salesforce? We are directly pushing back to the database. There is no mediator here. But in another logic, I wanted to get it from Salesforce. Once I get it from Salesforce, I wanted to pass those information to Apex class. I wanted to pass the information to Apex class. Uh, let it validate. For example, I'm entering the phone number. Okay, I'm entering the phone number. In the Apex class, first I wanted to validate it before saving it. I wanted to validate whether the phone number is entered 10 digit or not. Validate that, then only, if everything is fine and there is no issue with that, go ahead and insert into the database. Go ahead and insert into the database. Right? Go ahead and insert into the database. We can do this also. What I can do, I can take the Salesforce data and whatever the user has updated or modified, let's send everything to the Apex class and validate all the details and insert back. And insert back. How to do those? Right now we use the custom calculation, but right, but the new requirement is get everything from the standard controller and validate in the Apex class because we do not have a standard validation on top of phone. Let's assume that there is no validation for the field. 
validate it in the apex class and go ahead and insert once everything is fine how to do that the logic which we have to do is let's assume that i have here public account acc i'm not using the set get here i'm not using the set get here directly i am taking the public account acc so when you say public account acc so when you do not say set get how it is going to capture from the visual force page how it is going to get captured from the visual force page because we have a controller here controller has a apex pages dot standard controller which this means whatever the happen in the page all the details will be stored here so that means what we can do acc dot sorry acc equal to i can use the name is c dot get record i can directly capture it i can directly capture it whatever is updated on the apex pages i can directly capture here this will have all the information i need not to set our get so what i am doing c dot get record but the problem is apex pages dot standard controller does not tell which object data it is it does not tell which object data it is it, it can take anything it could be a account it could be a contact or some custom object or some calculation something anything that it could be string value integer collection or anything it should take right but how do i know that whether it is account object you are passing or contact object it is passing how can we know that we have to use the casting here once i get the record we have to do the casting casting means i have to use the convert the data into the account it's similar like if you are setting the string there is a string value here a and you are setting the integer value to the string if you are setting the integer value to the string what you will do you will do the casting right integer to string you will convert first then you will set it back to the string same thing here same thing You are, we are getting the records from the visual force page then and converting that record into the account and storing the account right and storing that account now what we need let's implement the custom method custom button let's say that public void let's say my custom say my custom say i'll simply say that insert acc let's say this so what i can do i can simply copy this we have a save button right okay beside this save button i'll use the another save button which says that custom save right what is the method that i wanted to call i wanted to call my custom save let's say till this point here till this point here any questions any questions on the extension part so sapna uh, like one thing here so extension controller is like custom controller only na because custom means what like we are only writing we are not using the standard functionality so like both are same only right yes that's what i have mentioned the difference between the custom controller and extension controller is custom controller need not to have a with constructor yes yes 
that is a without constructor when it is a without constructor calling in the visual force page will be in the custom controller when you have the extension when you have the controller constructor is there when the constructor is defined within the class then we have to use the extension controller okay So the reason they came up with the extension controller because initially when the visual force page is, um, everybody started using the visual force page or when it started um, releasing the visual force page, that time it was only the standard controller and custom controller. That's it. There was no extension controller. It was initially standard controller and custom controller. Later with the development input, they came up with a new thought called extension controller. But how it is going to accept along with the standard controller using the custom controller, you have to implement it with constructor. Then only that controller can be included in the visual force page. So that's the reason name came as the extension controller. Oh, okay, got it. Any other questions? In interview, they might ask you to write a program. Write a program. for constructor. Write a program for constructor. So everybody writes the constructor, but they forgot to give the parameterized. They forgot to give the parameterized. They will not give the parameterized. So when they say that write a constructor, then we have to ask, be specific. Do you want me to write a constructor for the visual force page or Apex class? If it is a visual force page, use this parameterized. If it is a Apex class, just for Apex class, no need to use the parameterized. Uh, hello? Yeah. I have a few questions on uh, this extension one. So like how many extension class we can use uh, in that? the VF page? We will see that topic tomorrow. We are going to do that. Okay. Hold on okay. that question for tomorrow. Okay, okay. Okay, so if there are no questions, will end today will connect tomorrow okay sir okay. yeah thank you thank you thank you, thank you.